There's an abandoned house between my town and the town next to me on one of the country routes that connects us. I've been to it before and even went inside twice with my sister and my best friend. It's an old house that dates back centuries, according to the bank records that I was able to find. And you can just tell by the design. The house is two stories with a basement, has lots of furniture and objects strewn about inside, and is far from empty. You can tell that it hasn't been lived in for decades, and whoever had previously owned it almost seemed like they just disappeared one day, leaving everything behind. The way I was able to get in before was through the cellar door in the basement, which is broken open and propped up with some big sticks. My first visits were around two years ago, and I hadn't gone back at all in that time. Another friend had expressed interest in seeing the house when I told him about my experience. And so, last summer, I told him that I'd take him to it. I never thought it was a dangerous trip and told him that it's just an interesting place to explore. We parked across the street from the house in the parking lot of one of the industrial buildings nearby. The road was a rural road, but it was far from unused and we didn't want to be questioned by anyone. My friend, being braver than me despite my previous visits, led the way across the street and to the front of the house. He asked me a couple of questions about it, and what stuff I found in there. I told him that the kitchen still had expired food in it, and that the upstairs had a board game set that I ended up bringing home with me. As we walked from the front of the house to the side, leading to the back with the cellar, I might know that there was a lot more brush than when I had gone last time. I had gone in the spring, and when I had gone with my sister and my best friend, I never experienced the thick brush that was now carefully moving through. I made a comment to my friend that there was a lot more foliage than when I had gone before, as we both tried to figure out a path to the cellar. Eventually, we pushed through some branches and found the cellar, broken and propped open, just as I had last seen it. We talked for a second about being nervous, and I really took in the view of the cellar that led into this dark, abandoned house. I remember being really intimidated while looking at the opening, and I made note that some of the sticks propping open the cellar didn't look familiar to me. I didn't state it out loud, however, as I thought it was just my anxiety. My friend and I discussed who should go first, he said, since I'm the expert, I should head in first. I was hesitant, but eventually, after a good five minutes of breathing and calming myself down, I started down the few steps of the cellar. It was an awkward entrance, as half of the cellar was collapsed and left little room for maneuvering. You had to duck under the part of the cellar door that was still put together, then inch your feet down the steps and finally turn your body sideways to fit through the small gap into the basement. I took a long time after ducking under the door, since my nerves came back for a second. I made it in fine, and my friend followed very quickly, which I appreciated. We both stood in the corner of the basement now, taking it in. I turned my phone's flashlight on, and he did too. There was a spiderweb in the path to the stairs up, I looked around and found some sort of tool to knock the spider web down, and I took the tool and swiped it through the web. After that, I tossed the tool onto the concrete floor. My friend and I talked quietly. I don't remember what about, but afterwards, we fell silent for a second. Above us, I clearly heard footsteps on the boards above our heads. It almost seemed like they were heading to the stairs that led down to the basement. I remember this part the best, as I looked at my friend, and he didn't seem to react to the footsteps I was hearing. I looked at him, suddenly worried, and before I could even say anything he said, we need to go. He turned around and practically jumped up the stairs. I remembered thinking he got out insanely fast. I could see him turn and reach his hand back to help me up. I was a bit slower, but I also quickly stepped up the stairs, and he pulled me through the opening. 
I landed on my hands and knees after I escaped the cellar, and I immediately stood up facing the weeds. I turned around to my friend, who was crouched, staring down the cellar. I said to him that we should get out of here, and he turned away and told me to go first through the weeds. I pretty much just ran through the brush, definitely getting cut out by something, but we made it through them and back to the front of the house very quickly. My friend kept urging me to go in front of him and he watched behind us before switching to flashing his lights in the windows on the first floor of the front of the house. I asked him what he was doing and if he was okay. He didn't really answer me at first, so I asked him if he heard the footsteps before we bolted out of the basement. He turned to me and said that he heard them. That's why he was watching the cellar to see if anyone was following us out. He continued, saying that after he pulled me up, he turned to guide me away before letting go of my hand. And when he turned back, he saw the bare feet of someone or something standing at the bottom of the cellar. Because of the cellar's dilapidated structure, he could only see their feet and a part of their legs. At that point, that's when he told me to go through the weeds first. He never saw them come up the cellar stairs or move away from them before he followed me. I didn't believe him at first and thought he was just trying to scare me, but I could tell by the serious tone of his voice, the silent look he gave me after telling me that he wasn't trying to make me laugh or lighten the mood. I still asked if he was lying and he aggressively said that he wasn't. He told me that since I already heard the footsteps, I should know that something had to be in that house. We stood there for a good second, not really saying anything, before we both then agreed to go back across the street towards our cars. We stood by our cars for a while, watching the house to see if anything or anyone would come out, but nothing appeared. After talking for a bit about how crazy that was, and him reassuring me that he was telling the truth, it started to rain and we decided to call it a night. I fully believed him, and he's always stood by what he saw. I haven't gone back to that house since, and I like to tell myself that whoever was in that house was just a homeless person finding shelter. I still get shivers to this day, thinking about how close that person was to me as I scrambled up the cellar. About 12 years ago, I was 9 years old, and I was home alone with my 12-year-old brother. We were supposed to go to my aunt's house to have lunch and wait for my mother there. We always went there because we were too young to stay home alone. We got up at 10.30 and took a shower. First me, then my brother. After that, we were both in the bathroom, brushing our teeth and finishing up when suddenly we heard someone knocking on our door. Since every time someone knocked on our door, they turned out to be a salesman or Jehovah's Witnesses, we waited for them to go away. After a couple of minutes, I went to see if they were still outside, but no one was there. What a relief. We continued getting ready, when suddenly we saw a shadow go by through the bathroom window. We waited, and looked in case it was just a bird flying by, when a hand hit it, clear as day. We got scared, and we didn't know what to do. My brother had his cell phone, so he immediately called the police. While it was ringing, we heard a loud bang at the door. Someone was brute forcing it. I don't know if they were kicking it, or ramming it, it was one of the most frightening things I've ever heard. My brother told me to lock the bathroom door, so I did. It would take about five bangs until the perpetrator could finally bash open the door. And then the police answered. I remember the exact thing my brother said. He was whispering. His voice could barely be heard. Hello? There's someone in our house. I think they are stealing. I'm with my little brother locked in our bathroom. Please, hurry. While all that, 
I was sitting against the wall, hugging my knees. It was one of the most nerve-wracking experiences ever. I could hear the man going through all of our stuff, emptying stands, going up and down the stairs, opening cabinets, he even broke a few cubs and plates. Then I heard the sound of my cell phone, and I remembered leaving it on the kitchen table. I felt so stupid for leaving it there. Things continued for a couple of minutes when we heard him trying to open the door to the bathroom. My brother got a hold of a big metal rod we had lying around there. He started kicking the door. Who's there? The man screamed. We said nothing. Another kick, then another. I felt I was about to have an anxiety attack. My chest started to ache. I had chills and was really hot. I tried to remain calm, but it was all just too much. After that, he stopped. We heard the door opening and then silence. We waited for almost another 10 minutes before going out of the bathroom. The living room was a total mess. Lots of papers and books on the floor. The cabinets were open, cups and plates on the floor. In our mother's bedroom, the nightstand and the closet were open and everything inside them was all over the place. Upstairs, in our room, it was the same thing. In about five minutes, the man was able to go through everything we had and left a total mess. After that, my brother called my mom and she ordered us to go to my aunt's place ASAP. So we did. When we got there, I was a little more relaxed. My aunt was waiting for us with ice cream, probably because my mom told her everything and she wanted to calm us down a bit. We went back home at about 5 p.m. My mom told her boss she had a home emergency, so she left early. She tidied up the house, cleaned up and left everything the way it was before so we could be relaxed. I really appreciate her and my aunt's efforts to calm us down and do everything so we didn't have to think about it. According to my mom, the police got home after she arrived at 3 p.m., around four hours after the incident. She explained everything, but because of lack of evidence, nothing could be done. The man was never caught and honestly, I don't even think they tried to search for him. The next day, my mom was home with us. Now I tell the story as a funny anecdote, lucky no one was hurt, and he only took useless stuff. But at the time, I was really scared. To a nine-year-old, an experience like that can have serious repercussions. I'm lucky it never came to that. And I got over that after a couple of weeks. So yeah, that is my story. This happened when I was a kid, and I double-checked the story of my family. This was in the mid-80s. I was about seven, at home with two of my older sisters, eight and eleven-ish, and two cousins, seven and eight-ish. All five of us were girls. My sister, who was eleven, was in charge of babysitting us four younger girls. You have to picture what our house looked like to understand what happened. It was a two-story box house with a flat roof and a small box front porch, also with a flat roof. I can't remember what we were doing, but we were all inside of the house. We kept hearing noises coming from the roof, like walking and what sounded like rocks being dropped down the downspouts. We thought it was a squirrel or something. Then my older sister said something about how maybe someone climbed the huge tree besides the house and got on our roof. We were all scared because we knew there was a roof access point in the bedroom that I shared with one of my sisters. What if he could get inside? My oldest sister told my other sister and one of our cousins to walk across the street to the corner store across an empty gravel parking lot and on the way back to look up and see if they could see someone on the roof. The girls, both about eight years old, walked halfway across the parking lot and being curious kids, turned around, looked up 
and saw a guy in one of those football jerseys. He was crouched down on the roof. The girls came running home, freaking out, and told my sister about the guy. My older sister, freaking out, first went to the neighbor's house to use their deck to see if she could see him on our roof, but she couldn't see anything. She came home and then called the police. It felt like it took them ages to show up. When they got there, I don't think they believed the word we said. They thought a bunch of little kids are making up the story for attention. One cop drove down the road, up a hill about a block away, to see if he could see anything, but the way the roof was, you couldn't see a person if they were lying down. Then these cops told us kids that we had to go upstairs and check everywhere to see if we found anyone. Five little girls from the ages of 7 to 10 sent upstairs, scared shitless, crying to look for this man knowing about the roof access? We all cried, not wanting to go, but they said we had to. To this day, I remember how scared I was. I remember looking, but how well do kids look, right? The cops didn't listen to us, didn't check out the house, inside or outside, and just left. We're so scared to be left home with the guy out there, who knows where. We didn't know if he was just laying down on the roof or jumped down or somehow got in and was hiding. My mom finally got home a few hours later and we told her what happened. And my mom explained to us that there was a lock on the roof access and no one could get in but she checked anyways. She then went outside to check. There were clear footprints in the dirt, dug in good from him jumping off the roof, onto the porch and off into the flower bed. My mom was so steaming mad when she realized we told the truth and weren't believed by the police. We went to the police station the next day and we were all separated and interviewed. We all told the same story. We never found out who the guy was or why he was there. Did he know it was a house with just five little girls alone? Thank you for listening to the stories. If you like the horror narrations, feel free to leave a subscription, like the video, and comment down below which one was your favorite. Thank you so much for all the support. We reached almost 500 subscribers and that means the world to me. See you next time when it's time to get scared together.